welcome back to the deliberations of the Citizens Monetary Policy Committee hosted by CNBC TV 18. We have in attendance Chairman uh, Dr. Pranab Sen and uh, members of the committee, Shaviran Chakrabarti from uh, City, Shaumya Kanti from uh, SBI, Sajit Chinoy of uh, JP Morgan and Sonal Verma of Nomura joining us from Singapore. Well, uh, uh, Dr. Sen, the Reserve Bank has kind of not allowed us to outguess its uh, dovishness or hawkishness. The guesses have been wrong, but you got it right last time. What is your sense on February 8th? Should they worry about the uh, growth and inflation trajectory and therefore come with a cut? But why would you why would you say that the lending rate will go up, sir? Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, that certainly will be an important uh, point. Actually, on that, Shaminan, uh, what is your expectation? At the moment, I think it's a six lakh crore. Uh, uh, excess uh, about 3 lakh crore in uh, MSS bonds and about 3 lakh crore going into reverse repo. Uh, are you expecting, when are you expecting the situation to reverse and would that be one of the calculations before the Reserve Bank moves on February 8? Well, it's, uh, we are slightly surprised that the outflow in January has been lower than what we were expecting. Okay. So it appears that the money is a bit more sticky uh, in nature. Uh, but as Dr. Sain mentioned that at some point of time, this money can flow out. Uh, at this moment, if this money does not flow out fast enough, then we are already seeing that the MSS proportion is coming down and the reverse repo proportion is going up. And if RBI wants a neutral liquidity situation to s finally come back, then how long will it wait for that neutral liquidity to come out from about six and a half, seven lakh crore of excess liquidity that is there in the system? So. But it might not be a call which will be made in February okay. itself. It might be deferred to April to get a better idea of how things are panning out. It can be even within the uh, two monthly policy committee meetings. But it's something which is definitely, definitely important because it will uh, guide the overall interest rate scenario and have a bearing on uh, the RBS policy rate as well. Okay, uh, in that case, uh, I'll come back to the liquidity argument. Uh, okay, let me complete the liquidity argument. Uh, uh, what is your sense, uh, Shomyo? Should the Reserve Bank worry about what Dr. Sen is saying, that the liquidity might go away? Will that impinge on their February 8 decision? Or do you think on February 8 there is scope to cut? See, I think there are a lot of moving parts to it. If you specifically ask me about the liquidity, I think the situation is still uncertain because there are still lending restrictions in place. Yes. So as long as those restrictions in place, it's very difficult to see how the liquidity situation will span out. But we expect as of now that a large part of those liquidity which has come in is possibly the ratio earlier was expecting that maybe a little less could stay back in the mm. system. Yeah, we thought 10, 15 percent. Now we're expecting it could be higher at say 30 percent or so. <laughs> if that is the number which actually stays back within the system, then I think it may not span out the way we may uh, conceive. For example, in that case, the lending rate, there is still possibility for the transmission to happen even in April. So in my sense that the central bank will actually look out at the remortization data to see how much of the currency now, because currency circulation as of now, last month, last week I saw it has already crossed 10 lakh crores. So that means the new note remortization is already close to around 8 lakh crores. So if that is the number, so then I think it should not take a call in February. It should wait for the next one, two months to see how the remortization plays out and then take a call on maintaining liquidity at neutral levels in the next fiscal year or so. So, so as of now, taking a call on February 8th, it looks a little more difficult than early. So a CRR hike is not uh, on the cards at all, however temporary. Oh no, I would not uh, imagine that at all. I mean, I, I think the point here is 
the RBI thinks that at least for the most part, policy rate cuts are done. We've got maybe a little bit left. The focus was how do you get the transmission? As it turned out, we got much of the transmission yes. because of demonetization. And I'm of the view that the yield curve could of course change if the RBI cuts or doesn't cut. That could normalize, especially given what's happening globally. But I'd be hard-pressed to think that lending rates would reverse because when banks cut lending rates, they have the expectation that only some part would remain. I think the next leg of transmission is that once the process is liberalized, you might see deposit rates being cut so that bank net interest margins are preserved. So the way I see it is that because much of the transmission has happened, that will give the RBI a little bit more elbow room that, you know, what we worried about all this time has finally gone through. So, so Shabhi, you also don't expect uh, lending rates to go up uh, uh, for banks? No, as of now, I don't expect because I also share the same view that there is still scope for the deposit risk to go down from the current levels because once the demand tension is complete, I think banks will definitely take a call on the deposit risk in the, uh, in, in, if not this fiscal, at least in the next, next fiscal. fiscal. Okay. Well, now for the uh, rupee angle. Actually, uh, that was brought out even by uh, the uh, uh, economic survey, though they argued that the rupee is not as overvalued as the Reserve Bank's data indicates. The Reserve Bank's RER indicates that the uh, 36 country uh, measure keeps the rupee 18% uh, overvalued, actually 18.64 to be precise, so 19% overvalued, a historic high. And it was 17% overvalued when that big fall came. Uh, I think in 2012, uh, it was uh, to some extent overvalued even through uh, early 2013, the first six months, accounting for the taper tantrum taking a big chunk off. So, uh, Sonal, from the rupee angle, do you think a cut is warranted and that the rupee ought to depreciate? My fear is, uh, no, Sonal, my, my, the, uh, my fear also is that if the rupee is way out of whack uh, and is, you know, 18% overvalued or 19% overvalued, it may work to uh, allow it to depreciate or force it to depreciate or edge it to depreciate merely to avoid a quantum fall uh, when maybe uh, global factors become volatile. Okay. Well, fair point. Uh, uh, I mean, fair argument, though I would still seriously worry uh, whether the rupee has become a little overvalued and whether it's almost a time like in 1997, uh, Dr. Reddy talks down uh, the rupee as uh, uh, he did in 1997 in that uh, Goa meeting. Uh, Sajid? Can, can I take issue with this description of the rupee being overvalued? I think just because the RER was at 100 some years ago doesn't mean that was fair value. Okay. Fair value is a very complicated dynamic phenomenon. Okay. I think it's, it's very glib to say that there's an 18 percent overvaluation. Uh, I, I would argue, I agree with Sonal, that if you were seeing secular loss in market share mm. or secular increase in non-oil, non-gold imports, which is also not the case, okay. it's hard to make the argument. What, I, what we can say is it, the stability of the nominal effective exchange rate masks certain bilateral imbalances. What I worry about is the India-Chinese exchange rate, the mm. rupee has appreciated 9% versus the CNY yes, in real terms in the last 15 months. 
and China accounts for 40% of our trade deficit. So there are certain bilateral imbalances that can get accentuated. But, you know, broadly, it's very, I think it's, uh, it's not responsible to say necessarily okay. that you get such a, that you are so overvalued. And B, uh, there is a trade-off here. The more you depreciate the currency and the more the path through to inflation, the, the more we have to adjust our inflation forecast and the less pace to cut domestic interest rates. So there is a trade-off that we have to consider. Okay, yes, certainly. Uh, well, Dr. Sen, we have put as many uh, elements as possible uh, uh, to discuss uh, uh, the growth dynamic, the inflation dynamic, which is likely to remain subdued for now, uh, the liquidity, uh, uh, which also kind of uh, uh, skews to the extent to which the Reserve Bank's cut may be effective at this point in time, and then, of course, the rupee dynamic as well. Uh, how much space is there to cut for the Reserve Bank now and uh, in the near future, in all of 2017? Okay, and signaling that more dovishness, you mean. Yep. Uh, 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 Sonal, uh, uh, what's your view? How much space is there in 2017? Okay, uh, Shamiran? Uh, well, uh, we have several issues. We have a sticky core inflation issue. We have a slightly more longer term risk on global reflation seeping onto Indian inflation. We have an issue that the government wants to have farm income doubling by 2022. You cannot have that with food inflation at 2% or even below. Uh, so if you put all this together, uh, our sense is that the FY18 average inflation could be higher than the FY17 average inflation. Uh, that leaves very little scope for uh, rate cuts. We've already seen most of the transmission happening in FY17 itself. So if at all one more rate cut is possible, maybe we keep it up our sleeves and use it at a time when uh, we, we, we have the global factors in favor of us. So I would probably wait at this juncture. Uh, Shomyo, uh, we have to quickly wind up. How much space? Yeah, uh, just very quickly, I think, uh, uh, I think the RBI is at the fag end of the rate cycle now. Because if you look into the, for example, just take the data on yield differential, it is collected by 115 basis yeah. points. So that's first thing. The second thing is that irrespective of whether the RBI cuts or not, yields are unlikely to decrease significantly that's from right. the current level. So that's so basically those two are diverse. So in any case, if there is plentiful of liquidity, the transmission will continue to happen. And in my sense, the only thing the RBI should now think of is the timing, because Fed is going to hike possibly two to three times during the year. So whether if they have a space for red card, whether they want to do it now or whether they want to do it later, that's the call which the RBI has to take based on what cycle they believe they are in. So in my sense, the cut for a, I mean the red card scenario looks almost at the fact and possibly another 25 could be the best thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shamyu, uh, sorry, uh, Shajid, uh, how much space does the government, ha does the RBI have? And is the word accommodation also likely to perhaps last only one more policy? So I, I agree with everybody. I think we're probably looking at 25 basis points more of space for all the reasons mentioned. It comes back again crucially to the first question. When do you want to get to 4% and how do you view the world? The more threatening the world economy is, the less space there is. So I think about 25, whether they use it now or if it would be very much a judgment call of where the right timing is. I think accommodative is, is I think, you know, is just, in the past what's happened is when you had rate cuts that the market did not expect, but you didn't give the indication that there would be more, 
you sort of stamp on your own transmission. Mm. So I think a comedy is just a placeholder to say, listen, if at some point in the future space opens up, uh, we won't be stubborn about it. We will utilize that space. There's no point spooking markets for the sake of it. Then you cut interest rates yeah. and yield curves still steepen because people say, oh, we've come to the end of the cycle. So what's the value in that? So, so I think they would still say accommodative, but we have to read the tea leaves now that given all that's happening globally, probably 25 basis points more. Okay, judgment call on whether it is going to be done in February or April. And may I ask uh, uh, our monetary policy committee to pick up their pens and write out uh, uh, what the call is. Uh, is there a cut first, uh, 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 the chair, Dr. Sen, is there a cut on uh, February 8th? Is there action at all uh, on, October, on uh, February 8th and what is their action? Okay, that's a 25 basis cut. So Dr. Sen has said that there is a cut and he has also given us the number. Uh, well, uh, I would first ask all of you to give us the action. Uh, uh, Shaminan, it's a pause. Uh, that's what uh, Shaminan expects. Uh, uh, Shaumyo, what's your expectation? Hold. Okay, so I will not come back to you all for how much. Uh, Sajid, what are you expecting? Uh, I, I think just given how responsible the budget was, so it's a cut and it's 25 basis. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Sonal, what is the action first? Okay, it's a cut. Well, since uh, uh, you have said it's a cut, uh, uh, Dr. Sen and uh, uh, Sajid have already voted on the quantum of the cut. Uh, uh, Sonal, what is the quantum that you are expecting? All right. Uh, well, actually, I would uh, want you to uh, write out that 25 basis and hold up uh, that placard for us. Okay, 25 basis cut from uh, uh, Sonal as well. So, the, uh, since there is a majority already, the uh, chairman and Sajid and Sonal are voting for a cut, but there are two members who are voting for a pause. So, it looks like it's going to be a narrow uh, decision. It's not an overwhelming expectation of a cut. Uh, Let's see what happens on February 8th itself. Uh, members of the Monetary Policy Committee, thank you very much for joining me in your deliberations and enriching it with the various uh, constituents and uh, uh, ingredients that the Reserve Bank has to look at. It's going to be a very uh, difficult decision for the Reserve Bank. A lot of moving parts that they have to discuss. Thank you very much for joining me in this discussion.